Hey, one topic that's come up that I want to address again, because we haven't addressed it in a while, is our flexibility model. And you're probably wondering, what is a flexibility model? Um, and what our flexibility model is, is we're a little uniquely different in the way we approach our treatment in that um, traditionally um, many clinics have said, when you join there, this is your therapist, this is the person who will, who will be seeing your child for the remainder of their time here. Um, we that's um, kind of an archaic model and it was built on the fact that um, there were stronger therapists and weaker therapists in a, in a facility and so parents tended to gravitate towards the stronger therapist and want to stay on their schedule. Um, when I interview and hire people here I make sure before they're out on the floors treating that they're at a very high competency level as compared to a lot of other, other um, treatment area so um, if even if I bring in a seasoned therapist from home health or the school district they are um, very um, uninformed on the model that we used here so they go through extensive training before they're ever out on the floors and there's a whole transition process so that being said what I want to let you know is every therapist that's out here treat treating is terribly capable and um, we don't, and eat, the therapist here will tell you, you can see anybody here, your child's gonna be fine with them. And we actually encourage that model because each clinician has an area of specialty or a different focus. And so if your child is transitioning between therapists, they're gonna get the ad advantage of multiple eyes. We also have students here, so they're training, so you get an additional set of eyes. So sometimes you're getting two therapists for the price of one. So the reason we do that model is generally speaking, many of the children with sensory issues have a lot of transitional issues. So when a client comes here initially, we will not throw them out to 10 different therapists immediately. We will get to the point where they're very comfortable. Then when they're comfortable, the therapist will usually request a transition. And um, we usually pair it around when the parent's schedule's changing some. Or if that doesn't happen, then we will, um, the therapist will initiate it, and that way they'll get the opportunity to work with somebody else. They're gonna know that therapist based on uh, them treating other clients in this facility while your kiddo's here. They're not unfamiliar with the therapist. You as the parent might be unfamiliar, but they are not. They're watching, and many of them are excited because they're like, oh, that therapist is really fun. I'd like to change and work with them and try something different. So that's why we have a flexibility model, but the biggest part of it is generalization of skills. What we're supposed to be doing is teaching kids skills that they can carry into the community, home, and all over the place. Well, if we can't perform them for the different clinicians here, then we really haven't learned a skill. So it's important that we are transitioning and doing that, but usually when we do that, we will plan a transition appointment or some sort of transition plan so it's important that you're keeping real consistent with your appointments and being here because if we set up that transition plan and you're not here it doesn't allow us to have that transition process available and then you're upset because that didn't happen and your child's upset and it creates a real backlog so it's important that we really communicate on all these things and we keep that transition process flowing and our process here real fluid. So I just wanted to review that because a couple questions have come up about that.